Ashish Kumar. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you, sir. So, you're from Rajasthan? Yes, sir. You studied in Karakpur? How was it to study in Karakpur? Was it a pleasant experience? Yes, sir. I would say it was a pleasant experience. Based on the hostel life and the academic discipline also. So, what are you doing now? Uh, sir, I did a job after my college, but then I left it for civil services preparation. And right now I am uh, full time into the preparation. Okay. Now, what is it in the civil services that attracts you? So, one thing that attracts me in the civil service is people centricity. Mm -hmm. That this job, job is close to the ground. Uh, a person who is doing this job gets to interact local with local people on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And he, gets, he or she gets to address the problems of people and that gives me satisfaction mm -hmm. when I help someone. What do you mean by problems of the people? Can you name some problems? Uh, if we see the people, they get problem, they face problem in every walk of life. Uh, be it when they are walking on the road, there is problem of traffic. When they are like getting some certificate, there is... I thought that is not what you are coming in civil services for. <coughs> Sorry, you are not going coming here to uh, take them across the road. Uh, so, um, sorry, sir. I am not about problems where you can make a difference. Sir, the traffic, for example, I mentioned, mm -hmm. it is a uh, very big problem. For a common uh, common man, it might just be like crossing the road, mm -hmm. but for a bureaucrat, it is a systemic problem. Mm -hmm. Like how the traffic of a city is congested in which area, mm -hmm. like which area to divert it to, and which area to divert it from. So that are policy decisions, that are administrative decisions that will be taken by a bureaucrat, and that will affect the life of a common man. But uh, being an engineer, do you think artificial intelligence will help in traffic control? Artificial intelligence will help in traffic control because artificial intelligence learns from itself. For example, it will analyze data of a, let's say, a uh, traffic crossing signal. So it will analyze the data of that signal for uh, like for over a year, two years, on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. And then it, it will found, find out that at what particular point of time, for what duration is this signal congested. And that depending on that, it can reroute those vehicles. Depending on that, it can plan the timing of the red light, green light, all those things. That is if you are in the police service. You can take care of traffic control, I agree. But when you are in the police service, uh, there are also certain areas where artificial intelligence cannot play a role. Can you give me some examples? Any one example even? So I would say psychological examination of a criminal. Mm -hmm. Investigation, Invest. inquiry, psychological examination. So their artificial intelligence cannot play a role. Their human element has to be there to analyze that. Mm -hmm. And uh, to determine what is right and what is wrong, can artificial intelligence do that? Can it have a sense of justice? <laughs> so artificial intelligence can be trained based on data. So that will depend on what data are we feeding it into. So it can, uh, we can say that it is, it is taking decision based on right or wrong, but they may not actually be right or wrong because right or wrong depends on situation. The situation will demand right or wrong and while artificial intelligence will take decision based on data. So it might actually be wrong what it thinks is right. Okay. Now from a study of sociology, uh, what do you think is happening in Indian society today? Uh, do you think the castes which were considered to be at the lower end of the caste ladder, they want to assert themselves more and for that sans Sanskritization is no longer the route. They are adopting a different route. What is that? Sir, today's society is facing an identity crisis. So today's Sanskritization is no longer a route for caste to assert their identity. They are go going for uh, substantialization. They are organizing themselves for themselves. Like they are not going to emulate the practices of our caste. They want their practices to be considered as separate and be respected for those practices. So they are going for substantialization and we can call that vernization of caste. Like they are basically saying that we are um, so and so caste groups. So we witness uh, in like last year in Rajasthan itself, I witnessed various Mahapanchayats happening. Mm -hmm. Agra Mahasabha, Rajput Mahapanchayat. So almost all the caste groups organize their Mahapanchayats to assert their identity.
Is it Mahatma Gandhi believe in the caste system? So, uh, so we have to distinguish between Varna and caste for that. Mahatma Gandhi did not believe in caste system, he believed in Varna system. Like the hierarchy of society, let us not say it hierarchy, Mahatma Gandhi believed in divisions in society based on occupations. Like there are divisions in the society based on Varna, like Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudha and they have been designated occupations by the civilization by history. So, he believed in that division. He did not believe in caste and especially the hierarchy part. He was strictly against the hierarchy. He said all are equal, all are doing their work and they are efficient in that. But the present uh, the Prime Minister of India talks about a different set of classification. He talks about Gyan classification. What is Gyan classification? He talked about Garib. Garib. Yuva, Anadatha, and Nari. Huh. So, what is that classification got to do with the Varna system? So, that classification, uh, we can say that Varna system is implicit in that. Varna system, what basically it does, it divides society based on characteristics, different characteristics. So, Gyan, like Garib, Youth, Anadatha, Farmer, and Women. So, there are four categories which require attention in today's time. They are that categories of society which are getting like let, um, let's say subjugated for a long time and they need to come out like they, these are the categories which are facing problems mm. and they need to be stressed upon by the policy makers and the administrators okay. Ashish, you are a student of sociology yes sir so you can you define what is marriage so marriage is a dividing line between family of procreation and family of orientation. So, right now before marriage a person lives in a family of orientation where he is having orientation like what's mother and father and after marriage it becomes a family of procreation that uh, a union of two people for uh, producing offspring in the heteronormative terms of the definition. But today homosexuality is also being accepted in various countries and same-sex marriages are also being considered. So, if we have to define marriage, then marriage is a social union of two people, males, females, heteronormative or homonormative, uh, uh, union of two people for uh, their mutual understanding, I would say. It's not for like, it's, it's no more restricted for procreation, family, economy and all those things. It is for love right now. It is for their mutual understanding. How do you distinguish it from a living relationship then? So, living relationship is not a registered thing right now. Living relationship, uh, people are uh, going to going for living relationship as an experiment. It's a precursor to marriage in most cases. Just now said it is not registered. Do you think Indian marriages in India marriages are registered? Yes, a marriage uh, need to be registered in India. Since sir? So, Hindu Marriage Act, 1956, uh, Special Marriage Act, also uh, they, they all provide for registration of marriages. Special Marriage Act, yes. But Hindu Marriage Act, the Sattva is the thing. Yes. Sir. After Sattva, you are supposed to be. And when you go to any foreign country, they ask you for a marriage certificate, sir, you are supposed to be. Yes. Sir. So, you don't have any. Pardon, I, I didn't get. When in India, when you get married, the seventh step leads to the marriage because the marriage is under the Hindu marriage act. Yes. But there is no registration message. Okay. And under UCC and uh, it is now a living relationship has to be registered. How do you distinguish between this and this? So let me ask you another question. Do you think uniformity, uniform civil code? Is going to help the society in integrating. So, India is a, uh, I would say, highly populated, highest population country and highly diverse country also. So, uh, uniform civil code is generally a feature of homocultural societies. And India is a multicultural society with vast population. So, even if we bring uniform civil code, implementation of it would face hurdles because there are concerns among especially minorities that it will be discriminatory against them. So, it looks majoritarian concept from their point of view. So, in country like India, we as per constitution, we have to endeavor to secure uniform civil code 
but as law commission also said it is neither desirable not feasible at this stage so in my opinion uniform civil code should not be gone into right now we should wait for more clarity from the society when the society is ready for the uniformity then we should implement it that's why constitution makers also uh, leave it for uh, to the future when the constitution makers so debating it in the constituent assembly and this matter had come up they said ki most of the aspects of your society are under reasonable uniformity the laws uniformity transfer property act uniformity company laws transfer property all matters of your society only a small window of your family and succession and even that in 1938 only the this muslim person law was introduced in 1938 before that it was all following the hindu laws in same uh, in the muslim law also following it in north west india they were also following it so only this one window was left and that window now after 75 years you say he is still not prepared for it so today when we see the society we find more polarization in fact the same polarization that was present in the time of 1950s at the time of independence if we see the society is still polarized okay in 1956 when they unified they unified the hindu code bill so what of the resistance in among the hindus but after it was introduced don't you find there is unity with the hindu now Uniformity is issue. The threat to the integration of society. You are a sociologist. You just said sociology. Do you think it is going to lead to the betterment of society and its holistic integration? So, if we see the intra-community thing, like Hindus, they are unified in terms of these customs. If we see the Muslims, they are unified. But when it comes to inter-community thing, like Hindus, Muslims, and other communities, there comes the problem. so the fear of uh, other communities when we see in uh, in the prospects of this ucc we find that they are fearful of imposition of majoritarian rule imposition of hindu customs that is what making this ucc a bit contested feature right now okay now recently there has been a development in which mauritius and india have entered into an agreement regarding certain things which are mauritius Uh, I am not aware of the Mauritius part. Mauritius, there is an island in which they have developed certain facilities for planting of their plant and a birth. So I am not aware of that feature. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, so, uh, okay. Which, which is the potential millet bowl of uh, India? millet bowl so, uh, i would say india has prominently bajra and jowar they are produced so if we uh, i'm sorry sir i could not get the question millet bowl see uh, the prime minister has uh, encouraged for sri and which is a which includes all types of millets so my question That which can be a potential food bowl or millet bowl of our country in terms of its. I would say inclusion of bajra, jowar, and ragi in the uh, uh, in the nutritional aspect of the diet. That would become the millet bowl of India because they are produced most yeah, in India. Question that which state has the potential? State. uh sorry the rajasthan produces 40% of the millets in india so rajasthan has the potential uh can you explain more something uh something more about manufacturing chains in your biotech what is how do you elaborate so manufacturing basically refers to when we have some inputs we process them and we make something to make something is basically manufacturing but when we say manufacturing science we use concepts involved in science for uh, manufacturing and when we say manufacturing we usually mean factory manufacturing that is mass production so manufacturing science is basically application of science and engineering principles to produce things in the factory system okay so 
but also a student of sociology. Yes. How do we look at the societal evolution in India with major areas of noticeable changes? During after 50, we referred something about 50. So let us talk after 50 to 2004. Societal changes and noticeably we can it can be visible that these are the changes we have taken in society. So one particular change I would like to emphasize the position of women in society. Okay. So the, uh, if we see the legislative aspects of it, the legislation with respect to women have evolved over the years. Let's say if we say medical termination of pregnancy at 1971, which was there and it was recently amended also. So yes. Second, Second is, uh, I would say local self-governance. It has brought a uh, huge impact on the grassroots level in the governance area of uh, society. Third is informational paradigm, right to information, I would say. Ashish Kumar. Ashish, I would like to begin with Rajasthan. As we know that Rajasthan is cultural capital of our country. So can you explain the main features of Rajasthani painting? We classified into various types. Like one famous painting, painting when we uh, talk about Rajasthan is Bani Thani painting of Kisangad area. Then there are Bundi school, the Dhundar painting. So various paintings are there. Nath Dwara also there is uh, one particular painting on blue background in which you see a uh, blue ribbon on the sky. Krishna Radha painting is uh, popular there. So Rajasthani paintings, uh, if we see the canvas paintings and then there are floral designs also on the floor. Like Mandana art is also there. That is also part of folk painting. Okay, can you compare it with uh, Madhubani painting? Are there some common ele elements between both of them? Okay, and there is a particular portrait which is compared with the Mona Lisa painting. Can you tell me the name? Yes, I mentioned it, Bani Thani. Who are we reading? Uh, Nihal Chan. Nihal Sir has He portrayed it. Yes. That is compared to the Mona Lisa. That's very popular. Yes. Okay, and uh, <coughs> that's very popular. Okay, and uh, <coughs> Asis, and uh, yeah, you have opted sociology as your optional subject. So I would like to understand the Mac views of Max Weber on society. Viewed society from the perspective of social action. He said that social action is to be studied. Social action is to be understood. And for that, he devised a method called Firstian, that is understanding. And in that, he gave two aspects direct understanding and empathetic understanding and for that he devised one more thing ideal type that whenever we are looking at society any social type any social action we should develop an ideal type about it like for a, for example a phenomena or you know a subject like bureaucracy if we see then weber's bureaucracy ideal type is very famous so he developed an ideal type about okay, it okay, Ashish, okay. Is, uh, are there some correlations with maps uh, is it uh, correlated somewhere with Marx? Are there correlations with Karl Marx? Karl Marx. Karl Marx and Weber. And Weber. Yes, they both attempted to study society and capitalism was uh, basically a correlation between the two. Although they gave different dimension, one positive dimension by Weber and negative dimension by Karl Marx. But still they attempted to study both the sides and it is said that Weber turned Karl Marx on its head. Like whatever Marx had proposed, Weber tried to oppose that thing. Okay, Ashish, and uh, <clears throat> what are the views of Gandhi, Ambedkar, and Nehru on the villages of India? Villages are temples of modern India for Gandhi. That's right. Uh, he found the authenticity in Indian villages. If we talk about Nehru, then he found villages to be backward, where people may be degenerate characters, that intellectually degenerate degeneration has happened in the villages, people are not moving forward in villages okay. and for Ambedkar he said that villages are cesspool of ignorance, den of ignorance, cesspool of corruption, narrow-mindedness. He basically hated the villages because of the caste atrocities, the caste uh, divisions in the villages. Asis, uh, you have done your MTech in industrial management and industrial engineering. So I would like to understand Solid-based material management, 
and liquid based material management still we are having the same traditional way do i have some formula or some vision to 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 implement a new basic but first describe solid based material so solid based uh, material management and liquid waste material management this is the biggest problem you know yes for the soil as well as air and water also you know they have polluted it badly nation is suffering so you, know, you want me to elaborate on solid waste and liquid waste first, first solid waste material and then liquid waste material so solid waste material is uh, the material which is solid in form as the name implies it's very common thing like uh, basically papers and the dry waste which we say liquid waste material is basically is liquid or in slurry form for example sewage is there that's clear explain the management how it can be managed in a better way so for solid waste we go for segregation and then recycling we try to segregate the solid waste into various categories and we uh, try to find out which all can be recycled and which all can be dumped so we follow that thing and why we go to blur the you know the process of segregation at the level of when it is when it come out from the industry why they don't take the responsibility of it so they do it there, there are rules to segregate source based segregation of waste and do uh, uh, and also they take care of your liquid waste so how so in your uh, river there is so households are i would say they are adamant in doing segregation of waste like waste is considered a polluting thing in a household so uh, if we see the swachh bharat hoopers that come to a house households so people usually collect their waste in a single dustbin and they people dump that directly so. ashish people do so people do so ashish people do so that's fine but i am talking about the industries there are color coded dustbins everywhere and the if we see the mass discharge from industries they do so so my just last question to you is uh, do we have developed some food storers do we have sufficient infrastructure for food storers there is capacity for 47% of grains and our prime minister recently inaugurated the program for largest cooperative sector grain storage at 1.2 lakh crore through primary agriculture credit societies and we aim to store 100% of grains by that how much is 1.2 lakh crores in dollars so 80 rupees is uh, 1 dollar so it would be around 1.5 and 1.5 billion 1.5 that so i am bit confused between billion and trillion is 10 to power uh, 12 billion is 10 to power 9 ah uh, that would be 300 lakh crore 1 trillion 1.5 1.5 trillion 1.5 trillion Uh, what is the no, so, 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 so. <laughs> i got bit messed up in that so, both times you just one decimal uh, decimal there yes a gdp is 3.7 trillion and uh, based on that uh, 400 lakh crore i like uh, 300 one lakh crore. 300 one more try. Uh, 300 1.2 lakh crore is how many dollars uh, 300 lakh crore like 3.7 uh, 300 lakh crore so 1 lakh crore ha uh, oh. 300 uh, anyway, what do you like to cook since cooking is your hobby sir uh, actually i am a home based cook so i cook north indian vegetarian cooking uh, that thing thank you sure sir. please wait we call you in a minute thanks sir